Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Box Office Receipts. I'm your host Tyler Callahan, and this week is a lot like uh, last week. We got some numbers to talk about, and some movies are being moved around. This time, though, it's sooner rather than later. And we also finally got a launch date for Paramount Plus. So the domestic box office is still quiet after the release of Wonder Woman 1984. However, we did get a new release. A new Liam Neeson movie called The Marksman from Open Road. It did open to number one with 3.7 million. In second place is The Crude's A New Age with 2.9 million for a total of 48.1 million. In third place is Wonder Woman 1984 with 2.7 million for a total of 35.9 million. In fourth place is News of the World with 1.2 million for a total of 8.7 million. And finally in fifth place is Monster the Hunter with 1 million for a total of 9.2 million. Just to note, these are the four-day numbers, including Monday, since it was Martin Luther King Jr. Day. As for my thoughts on the numbers, not much to say, uh, but they are still weak, as expected. Wonder Woman seems to have slowed down its decline, and has leveled out to the 2-3 to three million range. For the Marksman, it opened about as much as it should have. The Honest Thief Liam Neeson movie that came out last fall did slightly better, but also at that time there were a lot less cases of coronavirus, so it made sense. Taking a look at China, in the first place again is A Little Red Flower with 11.7 million for a total now of 183 million. In second place was Shockwave 2 with 7.8 million for a total of 163 million. It just barely beat out a Taiwanese movie called The Soul, which made 7.6 million for a total of 9.6 million. This is not to be confused with Pixar's Soul movie. In fourth place was the Chinese animated movie Wish Dragon, which, including previews, opened to 7.1 million. Sony actually had the international distribution rights for the movie, but due to the pandemic, sold it to Netflix to be released at a later date. Finally, in fifth place was A Warm Hug, which made 4.7 million for a total now of 115 million. As for the latest update with Seoul, it finished outside the top five with 4 million and is now at a total of 42.9 million. Like last weekend, the Chinese box office is slowing down a bit, but again, this is expected as February will have multiple new releases for the new year, and will hopefully get some huge numbers to talk about. A small update on Demon Slayer, which over the weekend retook first place at the Japanese box office. Last week, it lost to a new movie that premiered called Gintama the Finale. Well, this week they flip spots. Uh, it is important to note, though, however, that the box office for Japan will be slowed down for a while as coronavirus gets worse over there. Demon Slayer did take first place again, yes, but that is with the equivalent of $1.9 million. Also one of their biggest anime movies for the year, for 2021 at least, uh, Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0 thrice upon a time, was set to come out this month and was pushed back. Now let's talk about new movies, shall we? Warner Brothers has come out and announced a release date for their Willy Wonka prequel movie. It has been years in the making, the movie we have all been waiting for, I know, uh, but it will be coming out March 2023 with Paul King directing, you would know him as the guy that directed Paddington. Why do we need this movie? Well, we don't, and unless Warner Brothers gets a famous charismatic young actor for this, it will fall flat on its face on a release. But hey, good luck. Another move Warner Brothers made, uh, just after I actually published last week's podcast, was that Godzilla vs. Kong will be releasing earlier than expected. After having finished the deal with Lionsgate for the movie, they announced that the movie will be coming out two months early, now March 26th, instead of the previous May 21st date. The studio did not give a reason for the change. As for what I think the reason they are doing it, it is mostly because of the vaccine projections. Based on what we see right now, the reopening of everything has been pushed back from March to May. If people are able to do things normally in May, for the most part, theaters will be competing for attention from people who want to go out to eat, drink, travel, do literally anything. This, on top of the releases set for that month, headlined by Black Widow and F9 currently, means even more competition. So by releasing it early, Warner Brothers can get more eyes and attention to HBO Max and could still get a bit of box office revenue. Now, that is my nuanced idea of why they could do it and why they are doing it, Uh, but it could also be as simple as that the movie sucks and they're just throwing it out the door because there's still no goddamn trailer. So for VOD Premium, we kick off with Netflix. Thanks to their latest quarterly numbers, we now know they have passed 200 million subscribers. 
and are now 203.7 million. And for the first quarter of 2021, they expect to get 6 million more subs. For content, they talked about how now they have 500 titles currently in post-production. Those are some great numbers for the streaming service, and for them it is very much needed because while they're still number one, Disney Plus is catching up quite quickly in subscriber count. Sticking with Netflix, Deadline is exclusively reporting that they too have bought a Skydance film called The Heart of Stone. The movie is an espionage thriller in the same vein as James Bond and Mission Impossible, but female-led. As for the lead, well, Gal Gadot has already signed on to star as the main character with Tom Harper directing. Deadline is reporting that this is meant to be a potential franchise starter, which is what I think interested Netflix the most. Without knowing how much they paid for it, I can't really be sure if this was a good deal or not. But a potential franchise is what they have been looking for. While Netflix has been dominating TV shows and comedy specials, their movie franchises have been almost non-existent. With The Gray Man and now Heart of Stone both potentially becoming franchises, the streaming company is looking to fix that issue as soon as possible. Viacom CBS has already announced the launch date for Paramount Plus, the streaming service to take over for CBS All Access. It will launch on March 4th in North and Latin America, the Nordics on March 25th, and in Australia sometime this summer. The company will also have a special event on February 24th to go over the service in more detail, which is really needed. The issue I have with this so far is the lack of details. It's noted that in Canada, CBS All Access will become Paramount Plus when the launch happens. So, does that mean in America that this is not the case? Is there an upgrade path, or do people have to cancel and sign up for the new service? I hope these questions will be answered in the next month, because on top of that, we still do not know how much the service would cost. I feel they should move up the event a few weeks, because unless they do a big marketing push at the end of February, it seems that they are rushing this out the door. And that'll be it for this week's episode of Box Office Receipts. Question for the week is, if you are not one of Netflix's 200 million subscribers, why not? And what would it take for you to sign up? Let me know on Facebook. A link to it is in the show notes. Thank you for listening. See you next time.